company page when I started with just my picture that says, yes, it's just one guy. I know it's a risk buying from me because I'm probably going to be out of business next year. But here's my advisors, here's my LinkedIn profile, here's the, the revenue numbers, right? It took some uh, guts to, to, to do that, right? But I didn't want to hide. It just, it just wasn't me. And so then people said, uh, where is that? The best company page in the world, right? I got interviews. How did you do that? That is incredible. Why did you do that? Right? I got interviewed about that. Or, um, let me see. Um, oh, oh, you can't see because it's up there. It says, the best about us page in the world. Somebody blogged about my top page. Um, and then that blog was picked up by the New York Times. And then software, software, uh, it says, man writes software, blogs about it, makes $100,000 in, in five months. That, I was in the New York Times. Um, then, um, when, I, when you buy my desktop software, I always made it that the license was tied to you and not a particular machine. Because everybody these days has a work machine and a home machine. And I said, listen, you just use it on both machines. You don't have to pay twice. The software comes with you. And now it's more common. The Apple store, for instance, works that way. But in 2008, not very many people did that. That resulted in the perfect licensing model. Somebody blogged about this thing that I did, right? And it had nothing to do with the software itself. Or, um, right, oh, that one. Your little company now act like one. Right, that was about my about our stage. Um, for Valerie, she's in the, in the customer service. She answers the phone and we said, okay, let's come up with a job title for you that's kind of funny. So we said, you're wow the vision, because you want to wow your customers. And somebody tweeted. Oh my gosh, why the vision, right? That has nothing to do with the software, right? If everything you do um, is kind of has some answer, is interesting, is good, people are gonna you're gonna get all this free marketing out of it, right? Uh, the best story is uh, right, this is about customer support. Uh, oh, this is great, look at this. I have no clue what was something done, but three minutes on the blog and company pages has to be stopped. <laughs> right? This is what you want. Um, one time, I, um, one December, I remember I made a little change and I pushed it live and, um, and I went out to do Christmas shopping. Fifteen minutes later, my phone starts vibrating like crazy. There's all these emails. I had broken everything. Okay? I mean, broken. Um, I made a mistake. I, I, you know, it happened. Um, I was like, oh, God. So I run back home. I fixed the thing. It was a stupid thing. I, I launched the, the, the release process, it's automated, it takes 10 minutes, I was like, okay. And so I, in the, in, while it was happening, I wrote a little blog apology saying, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have rushed this out, I should have tested more properly, right? I'm so sorry, boom. But here's the fix, right? Uh, apology of the week. <laughs> so some students apologize for improper testing. This guy has a blog about apologies. He wrote a book about apologies, how to apologize properly, and he rated my blog post. He said, well, pretty good, it's the quality of the week. You forgot to say how this is not going to happen again. Right? Other okay, things. So even when you screw up, it, it results in marketing, right? It, it's good. Uh, what you're really going for is this. I made a Twitter background for our Twitter feed that is made up of all these different tweets about us, sort of testimonials. And that's our background, and then I've got this tweet saying, now you put a background. I don't know if you know who this guy is. He's the inventor of Twitter. <laughs> I have this on my wall because I couldn't believe it. Right? So if everything you do uh, is so good, things will, things will, will 